Hey, let's put a server together real quick. So first off, let's pull up them. Make sure I'm gonna be out of frame. Um, and we have to decide a few things when we're putting a server together. First off is gonna be use case. So I'm going to kind of make this just like a generalized Docker server. So with a generalized Docker server, we can kind of put any application we want on it. So just to give you an idea, if we go to hub.docker.com and we want to run a Minecraft server, here they are. Uh, you want to run a MySQL database. Let's see if it'll load. There it is. Uh, if we want to run, let's say, a CSGO server, it's going to be right there. Let's say you want Discord bot or Plex. So um, I've talked a good bit about Docker before, but really the benefit is, is we can make one server really act like multiple servers. But to do that, we need to kind of think about what's needed um, to build a server like that, right? So we're gonna need multiple threads slash cores, however you wanna look at that. So enough where each service you can assume is gonna use one to two um, when it's at load. So if we can kind of work around that and just, I think six to eight cores is really a nice sweet spot right now. You can really find some pretty good prices for that. Um, and then otherwise we're gonna to wanna to choose like the, uh, the chipset and everything we're running. So I was going to target probably like, let's go X79 for this, um, which is a bit older. Um, it's running on 22 nanometer Intel. Uh, you can get them really cheap and you can get really performant processors for this price. Um, RAM wise, probably 16 bits will do, uh, 16 gigabytes will do well for you. So we'll do 16 gigs. Um, we don't really need a graphics card. You can put a graphics card um, into a uh, Docker container, but it requires some extra steps and you have to have a reason for it. One might actually be Plex Media Server for uh, hardware transcoding, um, but it's definitely not necessary. So we just want really basic graphics. Um, and let's try to get a uh, like a generic case, like 3U or 4U case. Um, and that, that's really going to be dependent here. Um, I'm just going to throw a case into this build. Um, but you could really go with any MATX or ATX case as long as it fits your build, right? But um, what I really wanted to highlight here is based on the X79. So we can go with some Intel Xeon processors, which you can find pretty cheap. So we're going to go for the E5 um, 0 slash, it's also known as V1. So we'll say V1 slash V2 processors. And that's really what's going to save us the money here. So we could probably get a pretty good system running for four to five hundred dollars once we throw in. Um, let's go with like just a five hundred gigabyte SSD. You can always upgrade that later. Um, and this should be a pretty good build for us. Of course, we're going to need like a power supply. We're going to need a motherboard. I guess that's kind of including the X seventy nine. Um, but that's about it. So you can do this pretty efficiently, pretty cheap, and you can have your own server. Um, definitely before you go out and invest in a server, um, if you have a spare laptop or a spare desktop that you're not using, that is a great candidate to start on. Um, pretty much throw your favorite flavor of Linux on it. If you don't have a favorite, I recommend Ubuntu. It's the easiest one to get going with. Um, but let's say you've graduated past your old um, i5, you know, from like six years ago, and you want to actually get something that is serving, right? You want a server. Um, I run about four of them, uh, four full-size servers. I also run some micro servers, uh, which are little thin clients, but um, let's get going. So first step, I'm gonna go to Intel Arc. And we're gonna look at the E5 V2s. Um, and this is a really great database that Intel provides. AMD doesn't quite have equivalents. You have to do a lot more uh, searching, but we can kind of sort by core count or by frequency. Um, whatever really we think is best. So again, we're shooting probably six to eight cores. Um, we can look at um, a variety of different ones. Um, honestly, for, for most people's instances, you wanna stick around three gigahertz, um, and these are all blanket statements. So do not take this as fact, um, but just kind of guidelines. Um, and looking around, Price-wise, I bet you a 2670V2 would be a really good bet for us at 10 cores, 3.3 boost, and a 2.5 base. Uh, we can also look at the 2680, 
I'm just going to give us just a little bit more frequency, um, both on the boost and the base. Uh, they both come with the same amount of cash, and both are 10 cores. So this is where we're going to head to eBay. You can also go to AliExpress or Alibaba, sites like that. Um, but I think you're going to have a better bet going with uh, eBay. Um, so let's look at the 2680 V2. You know what? For that price, that is pretty good. It's a 115 watt chip. So compared to a lot of mar modern architectures, that's pretty hot. But all in all, um, I used to run 250 watt chips in my computer. As long as you have proper cooling um, and adequate power, um, it's fine. Just expect your power bill to be a bit higher. But for 115 watts, that's not bad. So let's kind of start getting things marked out here. And let's just kind of make a new page. And here we go. So CPU, we're going to target the 2680 V2. The V2. And again, let's kind of go through why I chose that, right? So we find the 2680. So big thing here, it's, it's going to be on the 22 nanometer lithography. If you want to go with the Xeon of this generation-ish, you're going to need to look at the V4s to get a 14 nanometer. Um, but at that price, you might as well go with more of like a, um, like a 2700X. Um, or like even a 3900X, something in that range might actually suit you better. Um, once you throw in the price of the motherboard and the RAM and just your upgrade path, um, you really do get a lot with Ryzen, but if we're trying to stay a bit older, um, I think this is a really great candidate. So let's look at some things I like here. Um, number one is an, a V2 and it's a two series. So this is a 2S, um, which we scroll down, we're gonna see it's a 2S only scalability, which means that we can have both one or two processors in the motherboard, which means we could transplant this into a dual socket motherboard. Um, also, you're going to see the RAM type here is actually exactly what we want. Sports up to 1866. Um, some only support up to 1600 or 1333. Um, but we should be able to get this RAM pretty cheap. Um, and that's, that's pretty good speed. It's quad channel. Um, and again, 115 watts is a bit much. You could definitely go with something else um, if you do want to go for something like lower. Um, something like probably the 2428L would be a better bet, right? Um, so if we look at total cores, and these L are going to be low power. So an equivalent to this would be like the 2648LV2 or even the 2450LV2. Um, but this one you're going to see is going to have lower frequencies but it also has a much lower TDP of 70 watts. So that's gonna save you again on your power bill. Um, it's not gonna kick out as much heat. Um, but if you're only running one server, I think a 2680 V2 will run you pretty well. So we can kind of throw that into our list here and we will set the price at, um, let's just say 48 bucks, because you can pretty much find several at or below $48. And these prices are always moving. Um, something you always want to check on eBay, of course, is if you scroll down to the bottom and we go to sold items, it's going to give you an idea of what they're going for. So yeah, about 35 to $60 seems about the range these are going in. So I think budgeting 48 bucks is pretty good. Now let's look at RAM. Um, again, it is quad channel up to 1866. So let's try to stay quad channel. Um, to do that, you're going to look up, actually, let's go motherboard first. Um, so that's going to decide if we can get ECC or non-ECC memory. Um, so you're just going to type in x79, because so it's the x79 chipset. Kind of, it's actually a C612. Um, but the way these work is you'll have a lot of these Chinese boards show up. Um, we're still looking at sold items. But you have a lot of uh, these Chinese motherboards show up that are pretty cheap, um, and they're kind of made of recycled parts. And some of them use um, ECC RAM, and some don't. So let's go with this one for our install candidate. I've actually, I think I've used this motherboard before, um, quite a while ago. But um, I've, I've noticed these boards are actually pretty good. Um, they're pretty lacking in BIOS features, but you can also often find unlocked BIOSes, uh, you get support for things like SATA uh, M.2 and NVMe M.2, which was not actually present on these motherboards back in the day. So they've kind of retrofitted that into the uh, the parts. And then you're going to get a few nice creature comforts here. So if we look at like the I.O., 
I used to run a very specific super micro board. Um, the X9 DRIF and it it had a lot of differences compared to a consumer motherboard where you actually do gain a lot of benefit so um, not showing any pictures well but the connectivity was really weak um, it had no audio chip out of the box um, and that's probably something you're not going to need but if you do it's nice to have and the motherboard's going to have it out of the box and I also spent about three hundred dollars on this motherboard and it did come with some other features like H uh, 8 RAM slots per CPU for a total of 16. Um, definitely had all the PCIe lanes to support how many PCIe lanes come on Xeons. Then it did have dual gigabit LAN and it did have its own IPMI or management interface. So that's some features you're going to lose with these Chinese motherboards, but again, for only having one or two servers, I think this is a super great board. So looking at $95 and again I'm gonna kind of stick to the higher end here on pricing because I don't want to lead you guys astray so for the motherboard looking at again we'll say 85 or $95 and that's going to be on the high end for you and that's gonna be an x79 um, I believe this is made by this is a machinist board uh, Huanzini I believe I that's butchering the pronunciation they make the x99 f8 um, so yeah, it's the Huanzin, I, I took Spanish in high school, but the Huananzi, uh, we're going to go with that pronunciation. That would also be a good board. Don't buy it from Newegg, but if you want to go for an E5 V3 or V4, I'd recommend one of those boards I've used in the past. Um, I will say it's non-registered memory, so it did support my ECC, um, in terms of it would boot. Um, but it didn't quite work um, with the ECC functionality. And we're just gonna call this the X79 Machinist. Um, and then RAM, so since it is registered ECC RAM, uh, you can just type in uh, ECC RAM DDR3. And this stuff is really cheap is the cool part. So let's say we wanna go for 16 gigabytes again. Um, lot you can do here so pack of two eight gigabyte sticks sounds pretty good to me again i'm trying to stay on the higher price so i don't give you guys the wrong idea but let's say we pick up two of these um samsung memory has usually worked pretty well for me in the past so if we picked up two of these at eight gigabytes per module that's going to give us 32 gigabytes um and for that price you might as well go for 32 gigabytes in my opinion so that's going to give us 32 gigabytes Samsung memory, and this is running at 10600 R. So that's 1333 megahertz. You can always look this up as well. So if you look up 10600 R DDR3, it's going to show you a ton of results that tell you the speed. So the uh, 1333, 1333. Um, so you should be able to look that number up. You have also seen like 12800. Um, so it's just a different way to calculate memory speed. So we've got the Samsung memory, the CPU, the motherboard. Let's go for storage. Um, and this oh, kind of get from any retailer you want here. So um, let's just go for Best Buy. You can have to go Amazon, Target, probably has SSDs, Walmart, um, Newegg, um, any retailer like that. But let's go to computers and tablets. Computer components, we're gonna to go to storage. Should be around here, there it is. And just, I would recommend probably a 500 gigabyte to get you started. Um, so, go to for 480 to 999. And let's see here, so we got $45, 55, 60 bucks. Okay, here's one for 43. So let's just call it 40 bucks because these prices are seeming a little high. This might just be Best Buy's pricing. Um, but right here, we've got a $43 um, 3x4 um, NVMe drive. It's a pretty good deal. That's actually not bad at all considering the sale, um, especially because it is going to be that NVMe drive. So SSD, and we can put, I'm going to say 45 bucks. I'm um, just going to use some leeway. Um, and you can go with the 500 gigabyte 
wd ssd um, and we're about done this is where it's going to get weird is with these motherboards you're going to notice especially on the images on the side you're going to see there's no support for graphics and we definitely don't need a powerhouse of a graphics card here um, but you do need something to display an output um, especially if you're having issues with SSH or your network's having issues or the computer itself is having configuration issues you're probably going to need to access the server every once in a while so to do that we need a graphics card to display that terminal output so I look for a few things when it comes to a GPU personally I really like VGA because um, you're going to find a lot of support and compatibility with that you can always um, go from VGA to HDMI or VGA to DVI, whatever your uh, uh, monitor is running, but a lot of server peripherals you're going to find are going to be running VGA, so it just makes your life a bit easier. Uh, so you want VGA, you want low TDP, because again, we don't need this thing to do much, it doesn't need to really pull any power. Um, and I like to go fanless if possible, and that's about my criteria. Um, so what I usually end up going with is going to be the Radeon HD 5450 and you can also do a 5430, um, those are a bit harder to find, or like a 6430, 6450, they're all about the exact same. And this is just a really good one for me because it checks all of my boxes. Um, not only is it super cheap, you can usually find them about under 20 bucks, um, but they're going to do everything you need and they're going to be fanless. So if we look at this one, for example, if we look at the ports, yeah, so it's got VGA, HDMI, and DVI. Uh, that isn't DVI-D, that's just, I believe, I think that's DVI-I, but don't hold me to that. So keep that in mind. Um, this is about 12 years old, uh, and it was not a top-tier card back in the day, so it's not going to have all the features you might want, but uh, it checks all of my boxes, so definitely adjust your boxes based on what you want what you need. But so we'll put GPU, I'm going to say uh, 20 bucks. And that is going to be just a Radeon HD 5450. Uh, you could also go with like a GT710 or like a GT210. The thing is, those usually end up having a bit more of a price premium. So if we did want to go NVIDIA, a GT210 would be plenty. Um, but yeah, okay, so these aren't bad actually. Um, so if we look at this one right here, very similar. So it doesn't have uh, active cooling, it's just passive cooling. Um, and if we look at the actual things here, I think I see that's VGA, HDMI, and some kind of DVI. I will say with some um, different flavors of Linux, you might need to manually install NVIDIA drivers. Um, I know Ubuntu really uh, works well out of the box with NVIDIA, even on the server, um, where you might have some more issues if you go with like Debian or SUSE or some kind of RHEL derivative. Um, it's not going to make the graphics card unusable, but it's going to make the terminal interface that it outputs like a very low resolution until you install those drivers. So there is a bit more of a headache with the, um, the G like anything GT or GTX, um, but nothing that can't be mitigated and fixed. So. Um, the way I do this, by the way, as well, is it's a bit harder to find this information on GPUs. Um, but if you type in, like, uh, I'm trying to remember the website, but we pull up, I believe, here it is, Tech Power Up. It's a really good one. So if we look at their GPU database, what you're going to want to do is look at IGP. We're going to say no, because it's a dedicated graphics card. We're going to want desktop. Uh, so mobile, we're going to say no. Um, and TDP, this is kind of a rough interface because it doesn't really let you limit it um, based on like a filter. It's only going to show like 17 watt GPUs or 15 watt GPUs or 19 watt GPUs. So you can play around with this. I usually just kind of look at 19 watt GPUs. Um, so we're going to find all of the Radeon derivatives I was telling you about. So here's the 710. Um, the 5450, and then all of the derivatives of the 5450. So you've got the R5 230, the R5 220, I've also used the 230 before, uh, the 8350. Um, all of these are pretty much the exact same processor. Uh, you can really tell if you look at the shaders. So this 230 and, um, is actually a bit more performant 
but again, we're not really going to see the differences because all it's doing is displaying a terminal output. So you can go into there and you can kind of get more information about what you're buying. Uh, you can see it's not a great card. Here's the GT210, actually at half the relative performance. Um, and we can look on here and see the TDP is actually 31 watts. So that is one of the reasons I go for the 5450. Um, realistically, you're not going to see much, if any, of a difference in uh, power draw. So I wouldn't be too worried about it. Um, but that's just, you know, my two cents. And then this is where it's going to get a bit more subjective. So we need to look at some cases. So first off, look at this motherboard. It's a micro ATX motherboard. Um, I'm not sure if it says MATX on it, but that is definitely MATX size. So it's going to make our lives a bit easier. That might not be MATX. Um, it's actually, because ATX is going to be, I don't know centimeters, but ATX motherboards are square. Um, so, okay, it is MATX. It might just be a slightly different variant. Um, they're supposed to be standardized, but they aren't always. So it's just something you need to watch out for. But just for example, we can hop on Amazon, type in MATX case, and we're gonna find a bunch of really good options. So I am a big Airflow guy. Um, I definitely spend a lot of money on Airflow, but you do not have to. Um, this right here, be a perfectly good case so it's got some style if that's what you're into but if you're not it's just a pretty good case it's got decent airflow so you can use the default fans built into it and if that's not enough for you you can add a few more I believe it comes with two or three um, this is actually an ATX case um, no it's micro ATX that Amazon listings are pretty rough um, so that, if you want to go with like a, just a generic computer case, you might already have one around, definitely you can put it in there. Um, but what I end up buying is more stuff like this. So you're going to see 3U and 4U cases. And these are rack units. Um, so it's standardized shelving sizes. Each U is 1.75 inches. 4Us is usually about where you're going to find 120 millimeter fans. Um, so it's going to keep your airflow a bit higher and your price is a bit lower. Um, but we're really moving into pretty expensive parts here. Um, so I personally have owned this case. Um, I've owned this RM41. Um, I, my desktop is currently in this CS350B. Um, and these are not cheap cases, especially in the market we're currently in. So um, it gets pretty rough on Amazon. And you're not going to find anything on really Best Buy. Newegg's going to have some options, and then B&H Photo is actually a really great option too. So if we look at B&H Photo, and we go to Computers, and they're going to let us choose, should be a server section, I believe. Sorry, we're doing this live. Um, computers, Computer Components, there, there's server components. We're gonna look at server rack mount chassis. This is if you want to, if you have like rack mountable hardware, I definitely do. Um, I have 30 U's myself. Um, so I'd recommend again, probably between three and four U's is kind of the easiest to work in. Um, I've owned servers between two and four U's before and the two U's just uh, were a little too loud and didn't cool my hardware as well as I was hoping. So, um, I actually have this case as well, and I'll tell you, it's a pretty good case for its size. Um, I did some modifications to put a fan on the front, um, just by getting an adapter bracket to put a 120 uh, millimeter fan, and then it has two 80s right here as well. And it's, it's pretty basic, so as you can see, it only has two USB ports, um, a power and reset button. The back is pretty barren as well, but if you have an MATX case, uh, or MATX motherboard. This is a pretty good case. Let's see what their price is. 100 bucks. So I'm going to call that pretty good. Um, for a case, I'm going to call it $100. And again, you're, these are just very low volume parts. So you're going to spend a bit more on this. Um, and then the other good place to go to is going to be eBay. So if we type in just like for you server case, and there should be, yeah, so here's an option. I, I've seen this one around. I don't personally own this one. 
um, just when you're buying these make sure it has the airflow you want and the more you spend generally the better build quality and the easier it's going to be to build into it um, so adjust your priorities how you see fit if you're tight on budget it's definitely okay to spend an extra 30 minutes building inside the case and to have a little bit worse airflow but um, this is a pretty serious hobby for me so I spend pretty good money on it and I get um, what I find enjoyable what I think looks good and what serves my purposes so I will say there are some nice features so like this one's going to come with uh, five hard drives that are hot swappable well it doesn't come with hard drives but just the hot swap bays and that makes maintenance a lot easier because um, you're not pulling the server out, unscrewing everything, getting inside, and then installing an extra hard drive. I've had to completely take apart servers to do that. So that is a nice feature. If I knew I was going to put a lot of drives into this computer, that's something I would care about. But again, we're only putting a 500 gigabyte M.2 SSD. So I'll tell you this one. If we look at this picture here, I believe it supports six hard drives. But it's kind of a pain to get to. And I'll tell you, these uh, mounting brackets are actually really hard to get your screwdriver to. So again, you're getting a cheaper case. It's going to be harder to build in, but it's going to serve your needs well once you have it up and running. So yeah, here we go. Four three and a, uh, three and a half inch internal drives. Um, four three and a half external drive bays. I don't exactly know what they mean by that. It has three five and a quarter inch, but I don't know about that. So I'd just be... Again, look at the pictures, see if there's any online reviews. Um, but yeah, you should be good to go with that. Some other things you can consider are uh, sliding rails. Um, just put something like this into eBay. And you're going to find a lot of uh, OEM stuff here, actually, which is not what we want. Because these will be specific to certain servers. So uh, some do have sliding rack rails. Like, I know the RM41 is a case I have. It has proprietary rails. So that's something you have to keep in mind. So not only are you paying much more for the case, but you also have to buy their specific rails. Um, where if we go to Amazon here and just say, for you, sliding rails. Um, pretty much anything here. Uh, do your best, read the reviews, do your due diligence. It should work. Um, like, yeah, I'm trying to see a good one that I could recommend. Pretty much all of them have pretty low quality control, but if you buy something like this um, and you have rack, uh, like a rack, it's much better. I used to just stack my servers on top of each other and it would scratch them really bad and you have to get to the lower one, it's um, a pain. But if you spend about 40 bucks on rails, it'll make your life easier. I will say the quality control on these, pretty much every brand I've used is hit or miss at best. Um, so keep that in mind, but that is a really nice to have. But lastly, we're going to need a power supply. So I've noticed your best deals are usually on Amazon. And how you're going to calculate um, your wattage is going to be using PC Part Picker. So if we go to System Builder here, and let's start a new one. It's going to get kind of tricky. So the thing is we have to match a lot of things here. So we need to choose an MATX motherboard to get started. Um, and it's probably going to be best to go with Intel to get the best like for like comparison. And I can kind of show you why. So let's throw in a B560M. That's a LGA 1200 socket. And let's choose a CPU. So we want to get a CPU with a very similar TDP. Um, so we're going to have to go with a 125, even though I think ours was only 115. Let's see here. That is the wrong one, isn't it? We want the 2680. Here it is. Yeah, so this one pulls 115, so you're not going to get a perfect like for like. And the uh, compatibility isn't going to be great in terms of like it's showing you like if parts work or not, of course. And your case probably isn't going to be here, and neither is your memory. But it can give us just a, I use this as a calculator for my wattage. So memory, we're going to look at 2 by 8, and we can just add two of them to our quantity um, and this is DDR4 so again this is not like for like um, but we kind of got to do our best here and we're just going to go for a 500 gigabyte SSD that is actually the exact one we have um, video card 5450 and 
and here's a Radeon HD 5450. That is good enough for me. They should all just be about the same. And that I think is everything we have. So we got the CPU, the motherboard, the RAM, the SSD, the graphics card, and of course the case isn't gonna pull any power. Um, you could add a couple fans if you are really worried about wattage. Um, but again, when we're building these, when you're not putting a really high performance GPU in a system, they usually don't pull too much wattage. So we're looking at 242 here. Let's say we wanna add four hard drives to it. Uh, so here's a caviar blue. I would not recommend putting this in a server, but they all pull about the same wattage, so I'm not too worried about it. And let's say we did want to have, you know, if we did want to do our due diligence, we could throw some case fans in here. Let's say we wanted four. Um, here's a three pack. Here's one. Cool. So we'll grab an Octua. We'll say we want four of them. Add that to cart or to the you know the esti estimate for the wattage. I did actually forget we are missing a CPU cooler. So this is somewhere where it's going to get a little trickier. Um, so let me throw this right below the CPU. That's going to break our. Uh... So cooler, I like Noctua a lot. I think they have really good support of this like weird stuff. We can just type in LGA 2011 CPU cooler. Again, Newegg's gonna have options. b and is gonna have options. Um, I've noticed my best bet has always been with Noctua and I just really like their performance. So um, the NHD9DX, uh, which is a mouthful, is specifically designed for 3U. Um, and it is specifically designed for, you're going to see here, your 2066, LGA 2011-0, 2011-3. We're on the 2011-0 socket here. Um, LGA 1356 and 1366. Um, so if you're going with something that is like some kind of Xeon, I would recommend the NH-D90X. Uh, so we're just going to put this at 60 bucks. And of course, this is something you can carry with you between builds. And that's actually something I do to save a fair amount of money. So I think that's a really good pick. If you are going for something that's on AM4 or LGA, you're probably going to want to go more with something like the NHD9L. So this one's going to have a lot more of your consumer stuff. So as you can see, LGA 1200, 1150X. Um, LGA 2011 is supported. Um, and then your AM2, AM3, and AM4. Um, this is a great option as well. So I bought this multiple times for my AM4 um, cases. Um, so once we've got that, again, we can go back here. If we want to throw a CPU cooler in, we can throw in the D9DX, let's say. Oh. We want the 90 millimeter. Um, L9i. Keep looking for it. Doesn't look like they have it on here. So we can kind of just put the U9S. That's going to be really comparable. Um, it is a slightly different case. Our uh, fan, it's a bit older of a design. But now we're going to get a pretty good estimated wattage. So you're going to see it went up a fair bit. So you've got the 10 for the CPU cooler. Um, and then you've got all of the fans pulling up to 5 watts. And then the hard drives can all pull up to 20 watts. So hard drives actually do pull a fair amount of power. Um, but now that we know that, we know we shouldn't see this build really ever go over 350 watts um, based on the specs we have. Um, definitely give yourself a little bit of leeway. So let's go for like a 500 watt. We give us plenty of leeway to carry this to another build or if we want to put some upgrades in it. Um, and I really like to with gold power supplies, but um, bronze are just fine. I've had no problem with bronze power supplies. Um, and EVGA is a pretty good brand, in my opinion. They've done me pretty well in the past. I've never had an issue with them. So, here we go. Uh, PSU, we're gonna go for 35 bucks. That's gonna be a 500 watt bronze unit. And this is just a regular power supply. Um, servers do often have custom power supplies, but when you go with these weird types of uh, cases, 
um, they actually fit in it pretty well. So don't think I saved that tab. Um, but pretty much, uh, and we'll go to iStars. This is the case we were looking at. Um, if you look at the back, you're gonna see that is a full size uh, power supply. Uh, and they will tell you if it's not, um, and they will tell you if it is. So if we look into the stats here, um, so this does take an ATX motherboard, um, which is actually pretty neat. You pretty much just don't get access to the slots because they raised the power supply. Um, so we only have a uh, micro ATX, we won't have any issues there. Um, but we're going to see it's a PS2, which is a standard power supply. So pretty much that's gonna be your entire build. So if we just calculate this out real quick, get out 108, about 200, about three. Yeah, so about 450 bucks. And you've got a pretty solid build here. So that's gonna give you, let's look at this, eight cores, 16 threads, um, a decent motherboard. Um, you do have to often supply your own C2032 battery, I will tell you that. But those you can get on Amazon for about a dollar or two. Um, you're gonna get 32 gigabytes of RAM. It's not gonna be the fastest, but it's gonna treat you just fine. That is gonna be in quad channel. You're gonna get 500 gigabytes of storage, which you can easily again upgrade to way more than 500 gigabytes if that's what you need. Um, it's gonna give you a basic GPU. Um, and then a case and a power supply. So that is everything you need to really get a server up and running. And again, if you have an old i5 sitting around or you've got a first generation Ryzen, those would also be great candidates to build a first server. So don't think you have to go out and buy a Xeon or buy like a Threadripper um, or anything like that to have a server. Most of my uh, servers nowadays actually run uh, Intel i7s. Uh, I've got some i7s, some Ryzen 5s, got an i5 or two, um, and then a Ryzen 7. So I've actually moved completely away from running Xeons because I did just not want to have a graphics card. And that was my personal use case and I didn't need ECC RAM for any of my workloads. So entirely design this around what you think is important to you. So again, if I was designing, like, let's say I have my Nginx server, which all it is is a reverse proxy. So my server that runs NixOS, the only application that it has to deal with is going to be that reverse proxy. So it has eight gigabytes of RAM, which is way too overkill. I just had eight gigabytes sitting around. It's got a um, two core, four thread processor, which is all it needs. Um, and that's, I mean, that's really about it. It's a computer about this big. Um, so build your servers. If you have a specific use case, build it to that. If you don't, I think this is a really great template. You could throw Proxmox on here and put VMs. You can go Windows Server. You could just throw Ubuntu or Debian or SUSE or Red Hat on this as well. Um, and you are pretty set, right? So you have plenty of performance at your fingertips. Um, and you're really getting it at 450 bucks, a pretty good price. So. That's my recommendation. I just kind of want to walk you guys through how I build a computer, uh, primarily a server, and what I look for and how I find the parts I want and kind of know that what I'm getting is what I need. So hopefully you guys found that useful. Um, I'm going to try to make some more home lab content. I know I focus primarily on software and I'm going to stay on software, but you have to have the hardware to support your software. So I hope you learned something and uh, see you guys soon. Thanks.